If you're new to concepts or just familiar with our settings, you'll probably come across a menu like this that allows you to set up UI and gesture preferences. The reason I bring this up are these two icons over here as they are actually created in concepts. Let me show you how they were made. Let's start by opening the import menu. Tap more to access the camera and let's try to get a good reference photo to start with. You want to get the camera as perpendicular to your palm as you possibly can and try to pose your fingers in a way that looks, well, iconic. Alright, I'm happy with that. Use photo. Now scale the photo appropriately by pinching with two fingers and tap to deselect. Before we start outlining this, let's open layers, tap on the photo layer and tone down the opacity of our reference a bit. Then tap new layer and close the layers panel if you want. When working on icons, it's generally about capturing the essence of the thing you're describing, so I'm gonna pick the fixed width brush in order to keep the graphic as simple as possible. I'm also going to add some smoothing to the brush to help me in getting that nice clean line work to start with. By the way, if you set the smoothing all the way to 100%, you'll be able to draw straight lines just like that, without having to set up a ruler. This feature has been really popular especially amongst concept users that work on architectural drawings. Anyway, that's looking pretty good. Now just two finger tap on the screen a couple of times to get rid of these scribbles and we're ready to start tracing our hand here. I'm purposefully cutting some corners here, again in an attempt to get that simplified look. Don't worry too much about getting this perfect as we are going to keep working on this. There we go. Now, as you can see, there's a few areas that could be a bit neater. So what I'm gonna do next is double tap the Apple Pencil to access the Notch tool. There you can see it changing on the tool wheel. And then just make little tweaks here and there to even things out a bit. In case you're using another stylus, you can tap on an already active brush and equip the tool wheel with Notch from the brush menu. The bigger the value on the brush size, the more line work you're going to pull at once. Starting to look pretty good. Now let's open the layers panel again and hide that reference so we can get a better idea of how our line work is actually coming together. There's still some unwanted unevenness on the side here. So let's keep working on that by pushing it around with the notch tool. Zooming in allows you to be more precise. Also take notice that the tool retains its size, so it will grow relatively smaller when zoomed in. And as you can see here, landing stylus on top of the line work will pull it, and landing it on the side allows you to push. I feel like the space between the two fingers here could be slightly rounder, so let's try to fix that. Tap and hold to select your stroke, then adjust the smoothness of the stroke as a whole. You can see how adjusting the smoothness value reduces the amount of detail of the path and sort of contracts the shape. I'll leave this at 27%, but it didn't really solve the roundness of these areas, so I'll go ahead and round these up a bit more using the notch tool again. Okay, now I'm happy with that. I'll increase the size of the tool a bit and let's just pull these back down as we actually shortened the finger slightly when we added smoothing to this earlier.
Alright, I think we're done with the notch tool for now. And looking at this, I'd like to increase the gap down here and move the thumb a little closer to the index finger. I'm going to start by tapping on one of the tools and by tapping again we'll enter the brush menu where we can change it to the slice tool. It's currently set to zero, so I'll just size it up a bit and we can start removing some of the outline permanently. To adjust the thumb, we need to cut this from here, so let's set the tool back to zero and slice the path right there. Now when we tap and hold and select this, we can move it aside to confirm that it's separated. To make sure we don't mess with the line weight, we want to stretch it as we adjust this. And of course, rotate it as well. Right, so at the moment you can't really tell which side of the hand this is. To indicate that, we want to add the base of the thumb here. Switch back to the fixed width tool and set the smoothing relatively high to get an even curve. That looks okay, but it doesn't connect to the outline properly. You can make this easier by activating snap, which can help you to align it. At this point, I'm speeding up the footage a bit, as I'm simply repeating some of the steps from before, further refining the graphic for a couple of more minutes. Next I'll also select the hand, so I can change the line weight by stretching it down. Of course you could simply change this from the tool wheel, but as we're working on an icon here, it'll have to work in smaller scales anyway. Then I'll just simply scale it back up. Before you settle on it, this is a good place to double check that it works roughly in the sizes you'll be using it. Finally, we're going to mock up the buttons by adding a circle around this. For this, I'll use the basic shapes object you can find by tapping import and tapping on the circle. Let's make the inactive one first, which will have a lighter outline, so we can just stretch this one and place it on the right spot. While the circle is selected, open the color wheel and select the mid gray. To make the active one, we no longer need this as we can simply duplicate what we have created. Lasso select the button, tap the copy icon, move it to the side and mirror it. To make the active one, tap and hold to select the circle, change the color to black from the color wheel and adjust the line weight. And we're done! Thanks for sticking around and learning how to create icons and concepts. I hope you discovered some new techniques that you can apply to your own work and accomplish your design goals. If you have questions about any of the tools or process, feel free to comment below, I'll answer them the best I can. And I'd love to see the projects you're working on with concepts too. Thanks for watching, until the next one, bye bye.